Um, today I'm going to do that second test on these DC circuit breakers um, as a demonstration as to what can happen to a DC circuit breaker if it's not sized correctly. But what I want to talk about first is this Grow Watt inverter. This is the SPF 5000. Uh, this is marketed as a uh, off-grid inverter or standalone inverter. Um, they're extremely well priced and the unique thing about this product is it can actually produce solar power without batteries sorry it can produce 240 volts or uh, mains power without batteries whereas most standalone inverters um, require batteries to function but uh, this one can do it without batteries um, obviously only during the day and it actually performs quite well on one of the systems i did um, I could run a set of power saw with big surge current and so forth, uh, just purely from the PV array uh, solar power, no batteries at all. Um, now, when I initially installed this product, it was done under the proviso that my client understands that the GrowWatt product is a budget product and that you're not gonna get the same quality from a standalone inverter that costs you know five six times the price uh, for the same capacity so i knew straight away it was going to be a budget product but my client understood that and he was adamant he wanted to give it a shot so we did um we installed the inverter everything ran fine i think it lasted about 12 months maybe a bit over 12 months and he wasn't working it that hard um, but after I installed it, I was actually that impressed I installed another one on a job um, and I actually recommended this product because again it was a client that had a very tight budget and I said to them, look, I don't have much faith in the product, I have got another one out in the field, it's actually doing quite well, but same deal, just be aware it is a cheap product and I don't have a great deal of faith in it. It may not last very long. Um, and then, coincidentally, I had another customer come to me who had purchased his own GrowWatt SPF 5000 and wanted it installed, um, which I did. And I said to him again, I'm familiar with the product, happy to install it. Just understand it is a budget product. Don't expect too much from it. Um, so, in the space of about 12 months, I end up installing three of these inverters. And in the space of the next 15 months, I think it was, all three of them failed. And the problem I've got, and this is why I use the products that I do these days, because I've learned the hard way over the years, is the product failed. And although it's got a two years warranty, it's not always the warranty period that you've got to look at it's how you're going to get treated when you're trying to make that claim and how difficult it's going to be because a lot of the manufacturers will just try and wear you down, fob you off, ignore your emails. You have to email uh, overseas, typically to China. Um, there's massive delays. They don't get back to you. There's the language barrier if you try and make a phone call. And generally, you just get fucked around no end until you give up and just move on. And that's what they hope for. That's what they work on. And I had so many emails backwards and forwards about this product. And the manufacturer was adamant it was out of warranty, even though it was clearly on my invoice that I purchased it from the supplier, that it was less than two years old, way less than two years old. In fact, I think it still had six months or seven months to go on the warranty. Eventually, I got the um, dealer who I bought the product from involved and he was actually really supportive and he threatened to not support the product anymore if they didn't supply a replacement one. So it actually got quite nasty with GrowWatt and eventually they did replace it. Um, the second client I had whose uh, SPF 5000 failed, they were well aware because I told them, hey look, don't have high hopes. And when theirs failed, we just decided that it's not worth the pain 
and let's just put Victron gear in. So that's what we did. We converted it all to Victron. And then the third client I had, he actually supplied that inverter. And when he rang me and said it's failed, I said to him, look, sorry, but I did warn you. Um, I don't actually want to know about it. It's too much of a pain in the bum. So what ended up happening to him, I don't actually know. Um, so that's my sort of review on the GrowWatt SPF 5000. Um, that is all factual and that is my experience with the product. And ultimately you get what you pay for. And again, I'll say it, it's not necessarily the warranty period. It's how you get treated when you're trying to make a warranty claim. Um, the larger manufacturers like Victron, Selectronic, SMA, you will not get that run around. Uh, yes, they will make you confirm and do all your tests because reality is, is quite often it's installer error uh, because those good quality products rarely fail. Um, so you will be requested to do some tests and to liaise with them and make sure they've covered all bases before they send out another inverter because they are an expensive product. You're talking, you know, six, eight thousand dollars in some cases. Um, so they will make you uh, do all the tests. And again, it's important you get it installed uh, by a licensed electrician with off-grid experience because if you install it yourself and they start asking you the questions, are you a licensed electrician? And you say no, then you're probably not gonna have much luck making a warranty claim. Whereas if you have it supplied and installed by a licensed electrical contractor uh, who has a um, relationship with that manufacturer, the, the process is gonna be a lot smoother. And essentially it's their problem because they supplied and installed the system. It's still under warranty, so it's not your problem. You don't have to deal with it. Um, they will sort it out. Worst case scenario, if that electrician is no longer around or he won't help you for whatever reason, then at least you've got your paperwork to pr prove that it was installed by a uh, licensed contractor who is familiar with the product. Um, and then what you may need to do is to pay a third party to come out and do those tests for you to give to the manufacturer um, so they can supply a replacement product. So there we go, just a bit of a background. And as always, it's a lot of the times it's uh, you get what you pay for. This product is about a fifth of the price of a, um, of a quality product of the same capacity. This is, uh, what is it, 5000, SPS 5000 ES, but I think it has an output of uh, 5000 watts. Uh, the other thing is to look at when you're looking at the, um, can't actually see it there, it'll be in the data sheet. The other thing to consider when you're looking at the specifications on a data sheet for a product is its constant power output and its peak power output. Some of them, although they might be a five kilowatt inverter, they can't actually do five kilowatts constantly. They can only do three, 3.5 or something like that. Um, so again, that's something you need to be aware of when you're choosing a product that it is correctly rated for the application. All right, hope you got something out of that. Thanks for watching. Cheers.